kind of fit them there on the screen. But um, see if you can do it right from the top. Take this graph, transform it into the reciprocal graph on the right. Okay, so I'll try to catch up to you. Find my asymptote here, where the x-intercept is located. And if I was to draw that vertical line at y equals negative 1, and another one at y equals 1, then I can see my invariant points also. So there's one here, and one here. Now, the easiest way to pick out the minimums, maximums, and important right. stuff is whatever you haven't used yet that you normally would use. So I would say these four points are pretty important if I was to do any other transformation. And they are at the value, here it's at negative 4. So where should I expect to find it in the reciprocal? Not everybody at once, slow down. One hand at a time. Get her done. Yeah, negative 1 quarter. So it's going to be at uh, negative 1 quarter here, and then the other one, this is at negative do it on this side at positive one quarter and positive one quarter. Let's put more over here. I think. Okay. So uh, now I've definitely got myself set up. I have to start thinking about how the graph will move. If there's no change in the original graph, as no changes here, well, there'll be no change in the graph here. As this graph decreases, this graph is going to start to increase. And then on the other side, um, I have to figure out where this graph starts off. So this is where I'm at right now. I'm waiting right here, thinking about what it is. These are very tiny negatives, so I start with huge negatives. This graph decreases, this one keeps increasing. No change there, no change there. So I think I've done a poor job of showing that it's flat, but I'm going to blame the tablet here. Well, what happened there? I don't know. Try again. Anyways, they should be flat. They should look like flat lines on, on our graphs. Okay. Okay, so... This is really one of those skills that practice makes perfect. You'll find you can do these in like one or two minutes. So give this one a try from top to bottom. No hints, no steps in front of you. Just see if you can sit down and put a reciprocal transformation on the graph beside it. So the x-intercept here becomes my asymptote, my invariant points where the graph equals 1 and negative 1. And any key points. So I'm going to include these two as my key points, just to tell me where the graph is sort of headed. So at negative 3, I'll be at negative 1 third. At negative, or sorry, positive 6, I'll be 1 6. So in this picture, the graph is always increasing. So I know that this is going to be decreasing. And to figure out where I'm at, this is where the asymptote is, where the graph is into now. I'm thinking about what these are. These are very, very small positives, so they will be very large positives when I start the graph again. And since this one on the right side here is de or sorry is increasing, that's how I know this one is decreasing when I when I draw it again the next time. Yes, Lily. That's a good question. So um, if we were given an indication, uh, let's do it in a different color. So let's just say that there was an arrowhead here that said this graph kept going. Then yes, we would put an arrowhead to indicate that it keeps going along where it was. But as it is, it's, it's not clear. So I won't take, if it's not clear in a question I give you, I won't take marks off. But um, anyway, I, I would hope that your provincial examiners are, uh, you know, a little lenient there. But 
if there is an arrow, so if there was one over here, then we'd also put an arrow to say it would keep going also. Sometimes it's a stick figure like what you started with and there are no errors. Or sorry, there are no arrows. Okay, so give this one a try here. Okay. So again, locate my asymptotes. You don't have to go in this order, but I think it's easy to start somewhere where it's uh, you know, a little simpler. And then I need to find my invariant points. So these points here, and actually all of this, oh, that's weird again, all of this is going to be an invariant point. So I'll add that onto the graph here, here, and this line. Okay. Now if we were to look for key features, these would be the ones I'd be interested in that aren't already on the graph. Those two points aren't on the graph yet, but I think we'd probably all agree they, they have some significance to what this is happening to the graph. So if this one's at positive three, I should find it down here at a third. And this one's at negative three, so it should be negative a third where it gets started. And from here, the graph increases, so I should see it decreasing. Very, very small negatives become very large negatives. Then at this side here, very small positives become very large positives. And as I move along, that graph is increasing still, so this one decreases. Then it switches at this point here, the graph starts to decrease, so the reciprocal starts to increase. And that should be my final, my final graph there in red. Okay, so the last one, there it is, I'll let you get started.